So the mood is tense, the tension is rising. I'm on the other side of the parliament in a crowd of protesters, a list of about a thousand, but it could be more. Uh, they're filling up a park and street just next to the parliament. In front of me is a wall of riot police uh, with their riot shields in front of them. And just on the other side of them, where I am, is a group of protesters all in camouflage, uh, helmets with ski masks, some with gas masks, um, and also bats and other uh, baseball bats and other metal objects which they have in their hands. It's quiet at the moment, as you can, maybe you can hear in the background, there's a, a demonstration going on, but there seem to have been flashes. I was at another area where there were uh, cars that were burned out of trucks. Um, it was very tense there, and the, and the protesters were collecting bricks from the street, from the sidewalk, apparently in preparation for further clashes. As you can hear also, there's an ambulance in the background. There seem to have been injured, but we don't know how many. David, why is this happening a day after uh, the prosecutors said that the uh, amnesty would be allowed for those who'd been involved in these protests and been charged? Well, the amnesty obviously dialed down the, the tension a bit, but it, it didn't eradicate it. The tension was still there, and it has been there for the last three months ever since these uh, protests began. We have... The central square, as you say, has been, has been occupied all that time. There are still barricades in town, and, uh, in the center of Kiev. And these protesters are uh, demanding the resignation of President Viktor Yanukovych. And they've been demanding it now for months. So obviously their frustration, uh, their anger, and also the tension has been steadily rising or has always been present in the background of these demonstrations.